Do you see this red light here? This is the light that can be used to make one of the most powerful lasers in the world that can actually shoot missiles out of the sky. Star Wars set the standard for some pretty cool technology. We're starting to catch up to this science fiction technology. We've got robots, AI, we can make holograms. But what about laser guns? Well, I showed in a previous video how you can make a regular laser look like a laser gun using the rolling shutter effect. But what about the power of lasers? I mean, the Death Star destroyed a whole planet. Well, to make a laser, you need to produce a lot of light. For example, this laser here is producing about one watt of light. This is enough light that we can easily light things on fire and burn stuff. The energy to make this light comes from electricity. So the electricity can be used to light up a gas like CO2 lasers, or it can be used to generate light in semiconductors like in laser diodes. The stronger your laser, the more electricity you need to use. But there's a problem with this. Once you get to really high powered lasers, you need a lot of electricity in a short amount of time. So when you get to really high powered lasers, they don't stay on all the time. They actually pulse on and off so that they can build up the electrical power needed in capacitors and then discharge them. So pulsed lasers have a high peak power but a low average power. But if we're looking to mimic the Death Star, we don't want a pulsed laser. We want a high continuous power laser. But we start to run into a lot of problems really fast. It's hard to deliver thousands of watts of electricity continuously, especially if you want a laser that's mobile. Batteries can't even come close to delivering the power you need for a laser this strong. But why are we constraining ourselves to produce light with electricity? Well, the reason mostly is because to produce a laser, you have to use monochromatic light, or light with only one wavelength of light. It's actually a very small range of wavelengths. This is because the light has to be completely in sync together. This can't happen easily if you have a ton of different wavelengths together. So is there actually a way to produce light without electricity in only a very narrow range of frequencies? Well, yes, there is. One way to do it is using something that you've seen all over the internet. This is the elephant toothpaste reaction. You just take some hydrogen peroxide and let it decompose with a catalyst to produce oxygen and water mixed with a little soap. Now in this reaction, we're typically excited just to see the bubbles of steam and oxygen, but there's something special about the oxygen that comes off of this hydrogen peroxide. And before I continue, I'd like to thank the Swedish beauty tech brand Foreo for partnering with me on this video. You can actually achieve a mini facelift with the Foreo Bear device. The Foreo Bear is made by Foreo Sweden, a company that's shaken up the wellness world. I've been using this device and can definitely tell a difference on my skin, giving it a more chiseled look. Foreo is a visionary brand that joins the tech and beauty industries. Bear is the world's first FDA-cleared medical microcurrent device with an anti-shock system that visibly reduces signs of aging by energizing and firming the 69 muscles in your face and neck. The science behind how microcurrents can help wounds heal and reduce signs of aging is interesting and well documented. I'll put a link to a bunch of studies that show the effects of these microcurrents on the skin in my description. So if you're always worried about finding a gift for a birthday or an anniversary or any other special occasion, this is the perfect gift for your significant other. So if you're interested, you can get 21% off Bear by clicking the link below. Now let's get back to our experiment. Normal oxygen that we breathe looks like this. Its two most outer electrons are in different orbitals and have the same spin. This makes it pretty stable. But the oxygen that comes off hydrogen peroxide looks like this. It's in an excited state where the electrons now fill the same orbital with opposite spins. This is called singlet oxygen, and it's very reactive. It wants to react very quickly with almost any organic material. In fact, it's so reactive that it'll even react with other singlet oxygen molecules to produce normal oxygen. When this happens, it actually releases a photon of red light. This light is in a narrow band of light at 732 nanometers or 634 nanometers. But you need a high concentration of the single oxygen to make this happen. So all I'm going to do is take some of these chlorinating granules, put them in a beaker here. And then I have some 30% hydrogen peroxide. So this is much stronger than the hydrogen peroxide you can get in the store. So if I just take this hydrogen peroxide and drip it onto some pool chlorine, then the reaction produces singlet oxygen at high concentrations so they can bump into each other. This actually liberates chlorine gas as well, so you have to be careful when doing this. I'm wearing a gas mask. Get some of this hydrogen peroxide. Now watch what happens when I drip it in here. Whoa! That is so cool. Wow. 
Look at the scary glow of singlet oxygen. But now back to lasers. If we use this light like from this chemical reaction, then we can make lasers that are much more powerful than electric lasers. The best chemical laser is about 25 times stronger than the best electrical laser. So the military decided to scale this reaction here. They made a laser called Boeing YAL-1. This plane housed a laser called COIL, which stood for Chemical Oxygen Iodine Laser. This laser made light by breaking down hydrogen peroxide to produce singlet oxygen like we saw here. This laser was huge because it had to house all the chemicals that produce the light at high flow rates. But the laser it produced was extremely powerful. It was a one megawatt continuous laser. This laser could successfully shoot intercontinental ballistic missiles from the sky instantly from hundreds of kilometers away. Even though this laser was successful and completed everything it was designed to do, it was decommissioned, mainly because of the danger of transporting these dangerous chemicals around to anywhere it needed to operate. But today still, chemical lasers like this one and others are much more powerful than electrical lasers because they carry that energy within the chemicals themselves. Now this still isn't quite the Death Star we were hoping for. The coil laser produced about 10 to the 6 watts. The Death Star would have required about 10 to the 32 watts. So we're off by a factor of 10 to the 26. So somebody tell Styro Pyro he better get to work on this. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to subscribe and we'll see you next time.